Greetings everyone! Today I'll be talking to you guys about the brand new Core i7-8700K and whether it's worth the upgrade, especially if you're coming from the i7-5820K or x99 in general. So, back in 2014, the i7-5820K was the most viable option for those who were seeking a brand new Core i7 processor. The i7 was a bee's knees in gaming, productivity, and, well, anything. It had been years since AMD released anything competitive, and with no clear solution in sight for Team Red, all of those looking to upgrade to something packing a real punch were trying to decide between one of two processors, the i7-4790K and the i7-5820K, myself included. The i7-4790K had 4 cores and 8 threads, whereas the 5820K had 6 cores and 12 threads. The new 5th gen CPU also provided support for the newly anticipated DDR4 RAM, preferred over the now old DDR3 standard. It offered a very promising upgrade to the 8 core 16 thread i7-5960X without worrying about an upgrade on the motherboard front. This was because, unlike the 4790K which was the end of the line for that range of CPUs, the 5820K was the entry point into Intel's enthusiast lineup of higher core count CPUs, so you could still choose to upgrade to the i7-5930K or the i7-5960X if you wanted to. Listening to me reflect on this, you might be wondering what the i7-4790K had to offer at all. Don't be mistaken, the choice between the two processors was a hard one to make. The one important thing the 4790K had over the 5820K was gaming performance. I remember watching benchmark after benchmark, looking at reviews, build guides, posting on forums, but no single piece of advice could have made me decisive on choosing between these two infallible options. If you look at the CPU release timeline, and look at why the 5820K was a popular choice among consumers, you have to review what was going on at that point in time. The 4790K was a refresh of the 4770K, so people already had a pretty identical CPU in terms of performance. It brought improvements to the TIM used on the CPU die, and slightly higher clock speeds out of the box. The 4770K already was a popular processor at the time, and that meant the 4790K wasn't a full release per se. People were already satisfied with the 4770K, and who can blame them? Also, this was at a point in time where there was all this talk about making your build future-proof. DX12 was right around the corner, and everyone thought it was going to be this huge new API that boosted gaming performance by a million FPS. As it stands now, we know this was a bunch of BS, but at that time, people wanted to ensure their rig would take full advantage of it, myself included. One of the ways you could take full advantage of it was with more cores. This naturally pushed people towards the 6 core CPU. Later on in the 5820K's life cycle, the i7-6700K was released. <coughs> well, hey, it's 2015 and Skylake is finally here. Like the 4790K, the 6700K processor was 4 cores and 8 threads. Strangely, in this year, right around the 6700K's release, the 5820K became popular once again. This was because the 6700K launched at a price much higher than usual, and was further inflated by low stock and high demand. The 5820K was cheaper. By this time, motherboard prices had gone down too, so you could get a great overclocking chip with 2 extra cores and 4 extra threads for less money than the 6700K. And the 5820K's support for DDR4 meant that if they were to upgrade in future, DDR4 RAM was not something they'd have to worry about, especially with the now steadily increasing prices of RAM. The 6700K did offer a nice bump in gaming performance over the 4770 and 4790K respectively, which meant the gap was ever increasing for the 5820K owners. The 5820K was, fortunately, a fully unlocked processor, so owners were able to bridge that gap by pushing a few more volts through it and subsequently higher clock speeds. I remember mine getting up to 4.6GHz quite comfortably, and that subsided the gap in gaming performance almost entirely. The 6700K was 4 cores and 8 threads, whereas the 5820K was 6 cores and 12 threads. A lot of 5820K owners saw moving to the 6700K as more of a downgrade than an upgrade, due to the loss of 2 cores and 4 threads. The same thing happened with the 7700K, which was not much different to the 6700K on a spec point, but it could be overclocked exceptionally well. By this point, the 5820K owner's fingers were twitching. The gaming performance to be gained by upgrading to Intel's new offering was finally substantial enough to justify an upgrade, but that feeling of downgrade was still there. Now, Ryzen 7 was out, and people had a lot more choice. But the upgrade to Ryzen was like the 4790K, 5820K fiasco all over again. More cores, but a loss in gaming performance, which was what they were trying to escape from. Not to mention, Ryzen was quite buggy on release. So finally we're here, 3 years later, the i7-8700K releases, and suddenly there are 6 core 12 threads available, 
without the compromise on gaming performance, without the compromise on overclocking potential, and with much more efficient figures and lower temps. With the i7-8700K finally coming into stock, owners of the i7-5820K are wondering if it's finally worth the upgrade. And I'm here to say, yes. Yes it is. Over the past few months I have hopped from system to system. I owned an i7-5820K, I owned the Ryzen 7 1800X, I owned the i7-5960X and then had a bunch of issues with all of them and went to the i7-3770 rig for a while, until the 8700K came to fruition. I now own the i7-8700K and boy, is it fast. You can compare benchmarks online all you want and do it that statistical way, but I'm here to provide more than that. I'm here to provide a long-term user experience review. I've had this process for a number of months now, and I feel my review and what I have to say about it will be a lot more beneficial than graphs and numbers. I want to admit to all of you guys that I wish I had stuck with the i7-5820K until the 8700K released. I should never have gotten the 1800X rig. I should never have gotten the 5960X rig because it just wasn't necessary. The constant problems with the new rigs, the horrific gaming performance of Ryzen, the constant crashing and stability issues with the 5960X rig, all led me to have to keep stopping and starting my channel. There would be weeks and weeks between my videos because I literally wasn't able to uphold any kind of consistency due to these issues. My 5820K rig had none of these issues. I didn't have stability issues, I didn't have poor gaming performance, and even though my so-called issues seemed individual to me, they do play a part in what you can learn about upgrading whenever something new comes out. That would definitely be something you need to apply to your decision when upgrading your CPU and motherboard. The user case for my PC is creating videos and playing games. I don't know when, but I would also like to get into streaming games at some point, probably when I get better internet though. The i7-8700K, in terms of performance, is the most impressive example, gaming-wise, we have seen to date. It is also arguably the most impressive example of that traditional YouTuber user case, as the multitasking, video rendering and most other workloads go toe to toe with the Ryzen 7 1800X, a CPU geared more towards workstation tasks than gaming. This makes the i7-8700K incredibly good value if you can find it for $350 or £350. If you'd like a heads up on where to get the 8700K for that cheap by the way, take a look at Alza. They ship worldwide, they're reliable, and usually are much cheaper than anywhere else I've seen. Links in the description. I believe those who currently have the 5820K or 6800K even, have the same or similar user case as me. People with the 5820K either wanted the enthusiast workstation performance on a budget, or a mix of great gaming performance and great workstation performance in the same package. In terms of whether the 8700K is a good example, I would say yes, it is. If you upgraded the 8700K, not only are you getting that lovely boost in gaming performance, but you're also getting a massive boost in workstation performance. When I say workstation by the mean, by the mean? When I say workstation by the way, I mean any CPU intensive tasks beside gaming. So that's CAD, physics simulators, game designing, video editing, photo editing, etc, etc. We're talking about, compared to the 5820K, 10 to 30 FPS increases in games. We're seeing a 50% increase in workstation loads with compression, rendering tasks and benchmarks. This is a CPU that will be able to fully utilize any graphics card to date. This performance will only become greater over time in comparison to the 5820K because it will be better equipped to handle future hardware. As more powerful graphics cards come out, as resolutions climb into the depths of 5K, 8K and the likes, this CPU will be able to handle it much easier than the 5820K. But, I'm telling you nothing new here. This CPU is hugely more recent, of course it's going to perform better. I'm not saying the 5820K performs badly now, it can push the 1080Ti at 1080p. It doesn't really get bottlenecked by anything other than SLI GPUs. It is still a very viable and very well performing CPU. This is where you need to take a step back and have a think about upgrading in general. Most of you will have already made up your minds about upgrading, but just think. Do you need to upgrade? Is your current hardware slowing you down from doing the things you want to do? Is it better to invest the money you'd spend on a CPU and motherboard on some more RAM, an SSD, or a new GPU? Those are ultimately the bigger things to upgrade if you want a faster computer, or a computer that's able to deal with more tasks at one time. Maybe you think of yourself as an enthusiast, and want to upgrade to the best you can, because you can. Well then, by all means, go for it. If you can hold off another year, if you're happy with your current performance, wait until the 9th gen comes out. That is apparently supposed to bring 8 core CPUs to the mainstream. If you're upgrading solely for the workstation purpose, I take a look at the Ryzen instead. The 1700 has gone down a lot in price recently, and is currently only about £270. This makes it a no-brainer. But, 
If you're doing any kind of gaming on your computer, definitely get the 8700K. Furthermore, if you're upgrading from a 6700 or 7700K or a 59 or 6950X, I just wouldn't. Those on 8 core i7s should upgrade next year and those on 7700Ks or similar won't see much difference. If you're on a 4th gen or earlier, then I would recommend you go for it. I'm sorry this video wasn't all graphs and statistics like they usually are, I just wish I had a video like this where someone just walked me through it and gave me some more direct advice as opposed to here are a bunch of graphs, oh and by the way they're all different to about 10 other reviewers. Good luck! If you like this style then voice yourself down in the comments below. Are you or have you upgraded to the i7-8700K? Thank you guys so much for watching, if you did enjoy this video then do show your appreciation by tapping the like button. I love your face and I will see you guys in the next one. Terra.